Too many times, dear friends, even our dear beloved full gospel people sort of have the idea about preaching something like my boy when he's five years old. He said, Mama, all them tail. Well, he always said mother. The girl always said mama, but, but he always said mother. Mother, all them tales daddy tells when he's a preacher, are they really so or is he just a preacher? You know, I gave some illustrations, you know, things that happen in life, use them as illustrations. Are they really so or is he just a preacher? I think sometimes folks think that we're just a preacher. Amen. A lady came to me who was an Assembly of God woman. A Methodist lady had come and had been healed from an incurable condition. The doctor said she was dying. She was raised up and made perfectly whole and healed completely. And here Assembly of God woman came to me with tears in her eyes and scorn in her voice and said, I wish you'd tell me something if you can, please. Well, I said, I will if I can, sister. I don't know whether I can or not, but if I can, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Well, now, how come God did heal that Methodist woman and she don't even have the baptism in the Holy Ghost? She hadn't even talked with tongues, and I've got the baptism talking tongues, and he won't heal me. I said, it's not a matter of him healing you. In fact, I said, I don't mind telling you at all, he's not going to heal you. You mean he's not? I said, certainly not. He's done all he's ever going to do about it. 2,000 years ago, he laid your sickness on Jesus, and Jesus bore it for you. With his stripes, ye were healed way back yonder, and you won't accept it, and you won't believe it. You're trying to get him to do what he's already done for you. But if you just come to the place that you would willingly and gladly, praise God, believe that in your heart, and start confessing with your mouth, yes, he took my infirmity, yes, he bare my sickness, as I'm healed, then the manifestation would come. For it's with the heart that man believeth, and with the mouth that confession is made unto. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I know, brother, if I had enough faith, I'd be healed. No, no, you've got enough faith. If you're a Christian, you have enough faith to be healed. You are just not using it. That's where your trouble is. You are not turning it loose. That's where your trouble is. You hear me? You don't need any more faith. After all, you've already believed God for the big thing. The new birth is the biggest, the greatest thing that could ever happen to you. The most miraculous, the greatest miracle that can ever come. Why, you think about a person being healed from a disease condition. But you, you think about the new birth. That is, you being born again and becoming a new man, a new person in Christ Jesus. Well, that's the greatest thing that could ever happen. That's much greater than being healed of some little old disease. Amen, that's the truth. You've already believed for the big things anyway. All you've got to do is just use that same measure of faith that you have. Just turn it loose. Praise God. Just turn it loose. Well, I, I would if I knew how. Well, Jesus told you how. He said, say with your mouth what you believe. Say with your mouth what you believe. Do you believe the Bible? Sure, I believe the Bible. Well, if you believe the Bible, then you believe that Jesus has already took your infirmities and bare your sickness. He's not going to take them. He's not going to bear them. If you believe the Bible, you believe that he did that nearly 2,000 years ago. Do you believe the Bible? Yes, I believe the Bible. Well, all right then. If you believe the Bible, then you believe 1 Peter 2, 24, that said, by whose stripes you were healed. Not going to be. Not might be. Not could be. Yeah, but I'll tell you what I believe, brother. I believe he's going to heal me sometime. That's not Bible. You can't find anything like that in the Bible. Your believing is not in line with the Bible. You're turning your faith loose in men's tradition and ideas, not in the Word. That's the reason you're defeated. Are you still out there? Well, I believe I'm going to get my healing sometime, though. That's not really belief at all. That's hope. That's future tense. Faith, the Bible said, is present tense. Now, faith is. Are you hearing me? Now, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to prove to you, and if you can read and got your Bible there, you know it so, that 
You have a measure of the God kind of faith, now use it. Now, I want to clinch the nail on the other side of the board. I've been a driving it in. Now, here's the clincher. Turn with me and read 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I'm going to wait a minute. I hear pages turning. I want you to read that for yourself. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. Now, Paul's writing to the church at Corinth, and what belongs to the church at Corinth belongs to the church in Tulsa. He says, we have the same spirit of faith. He didn't say we're trying to get it. We want it. He said, we have the same spirit of faith. According to it is written, I believe, therefore have I spoken. Therefore, we also believe, therefore speak. Now, here's something that startled me. As I look through and search through the epistles, the letters that are written to the churches, the letters that are written to Christians, I have never been able to find one single place where anybody ever writing to a Christian ever encouraged them to believe or told them to have faith. Not one single time did they ever do it. Not one single time did Paul ever tell one church he wrote to. Neither did James or Peter or John or Jude. Not one single time did they ever tell them to believe or encourage them to have faith. Not once. Our having to encourage believers to believe in how faith is a result of the Word of God having lost its reality to us. We are believers. You know, you wouldn't write your mothers, maybe your boys off somewhere, we'll say in the Army or in the Navy. Or your children's off, maybe boy, girl or boys, off in college somewhere. Well, now, you don't write to them and say, now, be sure you keep breathing. They're going to breathe as long as they're alive. You don't have to encourage them to keep breathing. That just goes with being alive. And bless God, you don't have to encourage believers to believe. They are believers. That's who they are, is believers. Hallelujah. You don't have to encourage believers to have faith because they are believers. Years ago, I was holding a meeting in Clovis, New Mexico, in the First Assembly of God. And one night after the service, a dear lady came. Her husband was state senator of New Mexico and, and also president of the largest bank in Clovis, and she was Methodist. And she said to me, I mean, well, she said to my wife later, my wife wasn't with me that time, and later she was with me, said, I never had anybody talk to me in all my life like Brother Hagin did. But I don't think I talked as badly as she said, but it does sound like me a whole lot. <laughs> She said, here, I went rushing up to him, shook hands with him, said, Brother, I want you to pray for me. And said, he said, what for, sister? I don't think I spoke that short. Maybe I did. And said, I said, that I'll have faith. And said, he said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to waste my time praying. You don't get no faith for praying for it. And then he said, he said to me, I thought you were saved. I said, oh, I am. He said, are you a believer? Yes. He said, I said, I'm a believer. Said, he said, well, who ever heard tell of a believer didn't believe? But you know what it did? It did shake that woman to her senses, her spiritual senses. And she began to see that she was a believer. And here she came, praise God. And I laid hands on her to be healed of high blood pressure. And I said to her also, when I laid hands on her, then I knew it. I said, you don't have the Holy Ghost, do you? She said, no. I said, well, receive. And so she started talking in tongues right then. Right in front of the whole crowd. Praise God. And after it, she said, isn't this wonderful? She said, if I'd just have known it, I could have had this experience for years. But nobody told me. Oh, praise God. A lot of folks want to be filled with the Spirit. And it's just that simple and just that easy. God put it on the principle of believing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, we having the same Spirit of faith. We're not trying to get it. We're not praying for it. Paul said to the church at Corinth, we have it. We have it. Put himself in on it. We have it, don't we? We have it, don't we? We have it, don't we? 